Hey, welcome back to Space Arena, the ultimate Python Turtle Graphics game tutorial part eight, where we make our player missile. So based on what we've done so far, it'll probably come as no surprise that our missile is going to be a child of the sprite class. Now it's gonna behave in some ways like a normal sprite, like some of the other objects, but it's also gonna have some unique properties and we need to account for that. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go ahead and copy just the first part of my player class. And I'm gonna go ahead and make that into a missile class. And you know, missile is just the word I chose for it. Now one of the things that's different about the missile class and the player class is that the way we have this program, the player always starts in the center of the screen. But the missile is not always going to start in the center, so we need to account for that and change that from 0 to x and that from 0 to y. Now, something to think about, well, actually, tell you what, let's just go ahead and put this on the screen. Let's go ahead and make that real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and create the missile object. Okay, I'm going to say missile equals missile. And let's start it at 0, 100, just so we can see it. I'm going to make it a circle. And I'm going to make it yellow for now. So I'm going to go ahead and run that and test it and see what we get. Okay, now we don't see anything, which is a bad sign usually. Now you should be asking yourself, okay, why can't I see it? Okay, and if it comes back to you, it's because we haven't actually updated it or rendered it in this process yet. So if you recall, we made this sprites list and oops, append, and we're going to add that to the list so that it is updated and rendered. So let's try it again. Okay, and there it is. Now it's a little bit big, um, and you see it has a health meter, which it doesn't really need. So we're going to have to make some changes to the missile class to account for that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fix the rendering. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and copy the render method from the player class and put that into here. So if you recall, what's called overriding. We're putting a, a method with the same name as the parent class method, and then this is the method that's used for this child class. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this zero point, let's go ahead and make it 0 0.2, um, 0 0.2, we could make it 0 0.1. And so that'll make it smaller. So let's go ahead and test that and see if it looks a little bit better. Yeah, so that's a little bit more like what we're used to, what we want. We don't want the missile to be bigger, as big as the ship, which doesn't make any sense. Okay, so that's that's pretty good. Now, the next thing we need to think about is right now I can see that missile, but of course I shouldn't be seeing the missile because it has we haven't fired it yet. So that's one of the differences between this particular object and the other objects. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this sprite give this object, I should say, a new attribute. We might actually end up adding this to the main sprite class, but for now, let's just put it here. And I'm gonna call this self.state. And in this case, I'm gonna call it ready. And in my mind, what ready means is that it is ready to fire, it's not already firing, I can go ahead and use it. So I only wanna render it so I'm going to have, well, let me say it this way. I'm going to have two states. I'm going to have ready and active. So if self.state equals active. So I only want to render it when it's active. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit F5. And let's see if it's rendering. Okay, it's not rendering now, which is good because it's not active. So now we got to go ahead and make it active. Now what I could do is, well, what I'm going to do actually, is I'm going to make a method here called fire, like so, like firing the missile. But because we want firing to be controlled by the player, I'm going to actually put a method in the player class as well. So watch what I do here. So in the player class, I'm going to go ahead and tape define fire self. Now, if you think about it, when the missile is fired, where does the missile start from? So I'm going to say missile dot fire, and it's going to have to start at the same place, the same x coordinate, same y coordinate as the player, 
it's going to have the same heading as the player because the player is going in a certain direction and it's going to have the same dx and same dy as the player. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So then in my missile class I'm going to go ahead and put type def fire self I'm going to put self here and it's going to be x y heading dx and dy. And again these are copied from the player. So I'm going to say self.x equals x self.y equals y self dot heading equals heading self dot dx equals dx and self dot dy oops dy equals dy okay. now something to think about I'll tell you what, let's I'm gonna leave that there for now and we'll come back to that just to kind of give you an idea so if I push the space bar okay, you can see nothing happens because I didn't do the, the keyboard binding so down here in my keyboard bindings, I gotta do win dot on key press player dot fire, and I'm gonna use the space. Now notice this is a weird quirk. This is capitalized, this is capitalized, and this is capital. Left, right, up, down are capitalized. For some odd reason, space is not. If you capitalize it, you'll get an error. Okay, so let's go ahead and test that. Okay, I push space, nothing happened which is not what we wanted because I forgot to do what? Ah, I did not change the state of the missile. So self.state equals active. So if you remember, it won't render unless it's active. So let's try that again. Now you notice how I'm testing a lot. I add a line of code and test it and then try and debug it. So I hit the space. And you don't see anything, but it's actually there. So if I do that, it's moving at the same speed as the player, so I don't see it. So, which is kind of interesting. But it's, it's very true to physics, though. If you had a missile and you let it go, and you're traveling in space, if it didn't have its own acceleration, it would just follow the same pattern as its parent, in this case, the, the spaceship. Okay, so what I need to do is when I fire the missile I need to give it a little bit of extra like juice let's say <laughs> all right so I'm gonna give my missile two more attributes self dot fuel and I'm just gonna use two well let's, let's use a hundred see what happens and self dot thrust and I'm gonna make that I don't know, let's make it 4.0. Now, on your computer, especially if you, I'm on a Mac, and Macs are really slow, so your numbers might need to be higher, or actually, probably your numbers need to be lower, otherwise everything's just gonna fly way, way too fast. So when I fire the missile, not only do I have to set it to the same direction and heading and everything as the player, I also have to give it its own momentum, its own acceleration. So I'm gonna do that with self.dx. This is a copy from where do we put that at? Uh, somewhere. This. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this line actually from the update here in the player class, and or sorry, in the sprite class. Excuse me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put that. So it's going to take its current dx, which is from the player, and it's gonna add its own thrust. Let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. Whoa, that's pretty fun funky. Okay, and then you get this weird kind of, <laughs> I don't know what you, what you want to call that, um, but it is pretty cool. Um, so what's happening is what, once we do this, it's dx and dy never really change. The dx and dy keep accelerating in that direction. So even though it bounces, it bounces back towards the direction that it, it was initially fired in. Okay, so what we need to do is in our update method, we need to, well, we need to custom customize the update method. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the update method from here, from the sprite class. And 
put that into here. Um, okay, so update. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. So I no longer need that because the missile is going to get its, you know, kind of juice from, from that. Okay, so let's just go ahead and test this and make sure nothing else has changed. Okay. Okay, so you can see it's bouncing. And. But you see what's interesting is it's following the player's bounce, which is kind of interesting. Okay, but that's what we kind of expect to happen though, to a certain extent. Okay, so let me go ahead and, oops, I must have hit that twice. So let me go ahead and make a new method for this, because one of the things you'll see is every time I push the space bar, it keeps going. Okay, so I'm gonna have to make a few changes here, I think at some point, but uh, we'll leave that as it is. Now, update. Do I need to update the missile as it's, if it's already firing? The answer is no. So I say if self.state equals active. Okay. So we only do update if, the, if it is active. Otherwise, we don't need to do that. Let's go ahead and test it and see if it's working. Okay, so it's bouncing, which is what we wanted. It's going that way. Okay. So interesting. You see when it's the player's bouncing, you can see how that affects the... So now, you don't want the missile to do that, so that's what we're going to have to fix here in a second. Uh, so, because once it becomes active, then it's active forever. So that's why I set up the, the variable fuel. So how I did this was, I said self.fuel minus equals self.thrust. Okay, so the faster it is, the quicker it uses up the fuel. If self.fuel is less than or equal to zero, and that's when we're going to reset it. So I'm gonna say self.reset. Okay, so now I, now I need to add a reset method for the missile. Def reset self. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to go ahead and type self.fuel equals 200 uh, or whatever, whatever I had was 100. Actually, I'm going to fix that in a minute anyway. So let's leave that as it is for now and I'll talk about why. Self.dx equals zero because it's not going to need to move anymore. Self.dy equals zero. And finally, self.state equals ready. So that'll let us fire it again once it has run out of fuel. Let's go ahead and test that and see what happens. Okay, we've got an error, which is lovely. Self is not defined, line 204. You can see I do that all the time. Uh, it's really annoying. Self, go ahead and run that. Okay, so it's not really going very far. It's not lasting very long. Now that'll differ a little bit on each computer. Some computers, it'll last longer. Some computers, it will last less long, I should say. Um, now what's interesting, well, one thing I wanted to fix and you see how the fuel here, I put it as 100, and down here I had it as 200. There's some inconsistency. So what we need to do is make another variable called max fuel. And so let's make that 200, because that, that, that works on my computer. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this around a little bit. And I'm going to say self.fuel equals self.maxfuel. So what's nice about this, the max fuel variable, is when we do power-ups, we can add range to our missiles in the power-up by setting the max fuel to a higher number. So when we reset it, it's going to be self.maxfuel. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that and see if it's doing what we expected. So, okay, it's firing, it's bouncing, okay, it's firing. Now you notice, again, this is, I, I try to do this with realistic physics. So I'm gonna go this. I'm gonna go this way and bounce, and then try and fire. So you notice how it's going backwards, because the player is going backwards. So you can either fix that by giving your missile more thrust, which would make sense. Uh, you can make this eight, but then of course then it won't last as long. Okay, let's go ahead and bounce. But notice when it's going forward, 
Now, I don't think you'll be flying around that fast in the game, but you might. Who knows? That might be your thing. It's no judging. Um, so, yeah, it kind of gives you an idea of what you can do. And again, the idea is that when you start the game, the missile doesn't go that far, but as you progress and level up, your missiles become more powerful. You'll be able to fire multiple missiles at a time and, and just kind of make the game a bit more interesting. So let's just review that real, real quick. We have created a missile class, and it is a child of the sprite class. We added a few new variables to it, a few new attributes, state, thrust, max fuel, and fuel. And then we have a fire method, which basically copies the current X, Y heading and DX and DY of the player, and then adds its own thrust to that, and which gives it, you know, makes it go faster than the uh, player. We also have an update method that has an extra check to see if it is active. And each time it is updated, we subtract some amount of thrust from the amount of fuel. And then once that gets to zero, we reset it, and then we can fire that missile again. Otherwise, everything else works the same. Again, the reset method, once it's reset, we set the fuel to the max fuel, DX and DY to zero, and the state to ready. Notice I didn't do anything with X uh, and Y. It doesn't really matter. Later, when we code the collisions and things, we'll make sure that it doesn't collide with something that's not active. And then in the render method, again, we only render it if it is active. Okay, and that is that. Stay tuned for more.